Hey everybody, I am Carolyn Byers. I'm the Education Director at Madison Audubon. And today I'm here because it is week two of summer camp. <laughs> That's right, uh, we have a virtual summer camp running this year. Um, and it is great for families who wanna keep their bubbles smaller or families who are welcoming other families into their bubble or summer camps or whoever wants to use it, it's gonna be fun. So however you're exploring this summer, we're here for you. Okay, so like I said, we're on week two of summer camp and week one was all about sight, all about eyes and how animals see and how humans see or maybe don't see. And week two is all about our sense of hearing. Um, ears are super important. So many animals and humans rely on our ears to survive, to find food, to stay safe, to stay away from predators stay away from cars. <laughs> There's lots of things we use our ears for. Um, and one of the coolest things we use our ears for is to communicate. We listen to other people when they talk and animals do a lot of the same thing. They communicate using sounds. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I am actually going to go pop over on our Facebook page real quick right now. So if anybody is watching this live, and they wanna say hi, I would love to say hi too. Um, so you can type in a nature sighting that you've seen. Um, you can type in a question. Um, you can just say, hey, but type me a message, say hi. And if you're watching this and it's not live, you can still write a message and I will go back and check on it, I promise. Um, okay, so now I can see comments and write them in if you've got them. I wanna see them. Okay, everybody, so today we are, all, I already said, we're talking about sound. And I want to start by talking about how our ears work. And today I'm gonna to be focusing mostly on mammal ears because there are a lot of amazing reptile and amphibian ears and insects have really amazing ears and fish have cool ears. There's all kinds of animals out there with ears, but it is just, um, or at least ways of, of hearing sound. <laughs> they might not all be ears like we think of them. Um, but I'm gonna focus on mammals today because there's only so much time in a day. And you know, I gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you all can see this. And these are all mammal ears. We have human ears. We have dog ears, we have bunny ears, well, cottontail rabbit ears, we have red-tailed fox ears, and this is a big brown bat. And I know I picked all mammals that have really big, obvious ears, right? There's seals that have small ears, there's squirrels that have little tiny ears. So there are lots of different ear shapes. Um, but this outer ear here is, is just that, it's our outer ear, it's called um, the pinnae. And this is our outer ear. This is a diagram of the human ear. And in our ear, there's actually three different parts. And this is only gonna be super science heavy for just a few minutes. So if you have little kids or if you're, you're not feeling some science this morning, it's okay, just tune me out for a second, okay? So the ear, our ear is broken into three parts. We have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. And they're all really important and they all play a really cool role in how we hear. And I'm going to show you this screen. This has a lot of words on it, but it's all very cool. So our outer ear here is where the sound travels in and it goes through something called the external auditory canal, which sounds so fun, um, but it's basically a tube where the sound goes through and there it hits the tympanic membrane, which is also called your eardrum. Everybody say tympanic membrane. Yep. Everybody say eardrum. Yep. Okay. When I say tympanic membrane, you say eardrum, tympanic membrane, tympanic membrane. Now, when I say eardrum, you say tympanic membrane, eardrum, tympanic membrane, <laughs> eardrum, tympanic membrane. That's a lot. So then that eardrum, it vibrates a little bit. It rattles and it's because of the sound waves. Has anybody ever felt their throat when they're talking? You can feel it vibrating. It's a little bit like that, how sound travels through the air. 
So then after that eardrum is, is vibrating, it's wiggling, um, the sound, that wiggle moves into your middle ear. And there's three little bones in there called the malleus, incus, and stapes. And you don't need to know those words, incus. I think I said incus, malleus, incus, and stapes. Three little bones, and they all wiggle together, and the vibration passes through that middle ear, and the vibration continues on to the inner ear. And actually, I want to talk about this tube for a second, the eustachian tube. This tube is really cool. I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second. And it's a tube that connects your ear to the back of your throat where your nose and your mouth meet. And if you yawn a little bit like that, you can hear your eardrum kind of creak in your ear a little bit. And if you go like this, oh my goodness, hold on a second. Okay, so if you hold your nose and then very, very gently kind of blow air out of your nose, just really gently, you can feel your eardrum just pop a little bit, okay? And that's kind of a way to test how all those parts are connected in your body. It's really neat. That's also why if you have a really bad cold, sometimes your ears can hurt or vice versa. If you have an earache, maybe you feel a little funny in your nose. It's all connected. Bodies are so cool. Okay, so we talked about the sound moving from your outer ear through this canal, wiggling your eardrum, wiggling these little bones, and then it gets really cool. This thing here that looks like a snail is your cochlea. And inside here is sort of like, it's liquidy jelly, it's, it's um, a fluid that that sound wave can travel through. And inside there are these little, little hairs that wiggle with the sound. And that wiggling gets, tr it gets translated by this cochlear nerve and it gets sent to the brain. And then your brain is able to understand that that's a sound that you're hearing. And there's also these things called semicircular canals and that helps you know which, which way is up. So if you tilt your head like this, those little rainbow canals here are tilting too. And that's how your body knows that, hey, I'm upside down, fix it or I'm upside down, this is pretty cool. I don't know how you feel about being upside down. <laughs> Anyways, so the sound goes through your ear, wiggles your eardrum, wiggles these little bones, wiggles these little hairs in your cochlea, and those talk to your cochlear nerve, which talks to your brain. And that's how sound travels through your ear. So cool. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing now and just talk to you. So that's how mammal ears usually work. But we all know that there are people who are better at hearing and people who are not so good at hearing and people who maybe can't hear much at all. And that's because our bodies are neat and amazing and we all have different abilities. And people who have hearing disabilities, um, they can have lots of, they can have a huge range of abilities of hearing. It's not just you can hear or you can't, kind of like how we talked about with sight. Um, so there's lots of different hearing impairments. Some of them are with the outer ear. Some of them are with the middle ear or the inner ear. And sometimes it's the nerves that go to your brain. So depending on where the sound waves are stopping, people might be able to hear a little bit. They might be able to hear only deep noises or really high noises, or they might be able to hear um, not so much at all. Some people can't hear at all. So the thing that I want you to know about though, is that some people can hear it really well and some people can't hear very well. And there's that range. And it's really important to be aware of this. So if you find out that someone's having trouble hearing you or hearing noises around you, you can say, hey, I'm here to help if you need it. And maybe they need help and maybe they don't need help, but it's a good thing to ask. Okay, so humans have lots of different abilities for hearing and so do animals. And this is because they've all evolved and adapted to their environments in different ways. And some of these animals are going to be in our animal superheroes week, like bats who can echolocate. That's so cool. But some of these animals just are able to hear mostly like we can, but just a little different, right? So there are cats and mice who are able to hear 
very well and able to hunt with their hearing. There are owls that have their ears at slightly different heights on their head. And that's so that if a sound is coming from over here, it'll hit their ears at slightly different, slightly different times. That already happens to us because if our ears are turned a little bit this year, if the sound's over here, this year we'll get the sound before this year, but owls do it just a little bit more than us. And that helps, helps them hunt in almost complete darkness. Or has anybody ever seen videos of owls hunting over a snowy landscape and they swoop down with their claws and punch through the snow and they grab a mouse? They can't even see it. They're just hunting only by here. It's so cool. Only by sound, <laughs> only by here. So there's also... Um, people like to compare mouse and elephant hearing and elephants are really good at hearing low frequency sounds. Um, and that's because their ear bones on the inside of their ear, they're a little bit bigger. And so it, they wiggle a little bit better with those low frequency sounds, but mouse bones on the inside of their ear are so tiny. They can pick up on really high frequency sounds, high frequency like this, except a lot higher. <laughs> okay. Um, so all of our ears are a little different and we can all hear slightly different things. And I think it's really interesting to think about how animals might be picking up on different sounds than we are. Like we hear human voices really well. If there's a human voice, we key in on it really quickly. And same things with noises that we know are important, like car horns, right? If you hear a car horn, you know exactly what you need to do. Stop and look and be safe. Um, but then think about, have you ever been in a place where people are speaking a language that's different from yours? Like most of the people are speaking a different language and then you hear your language, you key in on that language really, really quickly. And I wonder if that's the same for animals, you know, like if there's lots and lots of birds singing all at once and that Robin, here's another Robin, maybe that Robin picks up on Robin calls a lot quicker than it does other birds. I just think that's so neat to think about what, what it might be like for lots of birds when they're all singing together. Okay, so there's one more really cool thing I wanna talk about before we take a small break, and that's dialects. And when we think about human dialects, we think about um, how people can be speaking English, right? Or Spanish or any language, um, but they speak it in a slightly different way. So if you think about the United States and you think about English, because that's the language we're talking in right now, um, you can think about how in the South, people talk a little bit more slowly. And in the North, they might talk a little bit faster. Or sometimes people are able to tell where someone's from by the way they say things. Like they might have a Boston or New York accent, or maybe they talk like people in the UP or even Wisconsin. I know I'm from Buffalo, New York, and for a while when I moved here, people would tease me a little bit about how I would say my A's. Like, um, I say them very nasally. Like, I have a sister named Allie, <laughs> and I like to go, let's see, what's another thing that starts with an A? I'm having, I can't think of anything. Oh my goodness. Anyways, I say A is funny. Well, birds do this too, which is so neat. Scientists were listening to bird calls and they were realizing that birds that were singing the same songs, like say common yellow throats, a little warbler, um, they were singing slightly different songs depending on where they were. And I got to experience this. I was, I was in a class and I was on an island off the coast of Maine that's on the East Coast. And near the ocean, it was on the ocean, the island on the ocean. And there's this little bird and it was singing its song. So we like to, scientists like to make up mnemonics for bird calls. And so they'll put English human words to what a bird call sounds like. And this bird call sounds like witchity, witchity, witchity. And these birds on this island were singing witchity, witchity, witchity. And birds in the rest of the United States sing witchity, witchity, witchity. So they were singing it slower and that's so neat. And the reason for that is that all of these birds like to go back to the same spot when they build their nests. So because they keep going back to the same spot after they migrate, they have this little community. And it's kind of like with humans, we think up new words all the time and we start using them. And birds kind of shift their song a little bit 
over time and they do it all together as a group. So these birds had started singing a different song. And I have another example to play for you. So this is the song of a chickadee. And let me, let me find a, a picture of a chickadee to show you. So this is our bird guide for kids and it's free on our website. You can download it or you can, you can buy a printed one if you want. I'll put a link in the comments. And here is our black cap chickadee. And any of you campers who are super explorers, you have this book and you can flip to it and, and look at it. This is our chickadee. And let's see the song, the demonic down here, right there. It says Phoebe or cheeseburger. And they also say chickadee dee dee. But here is what chickadees sound like um, in Madison, at least pretty close to what they sound like in Madison. Dee dee, dee dee. Okay. So that's what they sound like here. And now I'm gonna screen share again one last time. And this is a pretty cool website that is talking about um, dialects in birds. And here's a map of the United States and here's Wisconsin. And actually this was that island I was talking about um, I hope everyone can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Here's the island I was talking about where the, the yellow throats were singing. Here's Wisconsin and Madison. And then over here is where these chickadees are. So we're very far away from them. But these are the chickadees uh, that sing a different song. Let's listen. Dee, 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 dee. Okay. I'll play the one that we have in Madison again. Here we go. Dee, 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 dee. And these ones go dee, 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 dee. Oh, that one was longer. So it's the same species. They just have a totally not totally different, but they have a really different song just because their, their, their dialect shifted a little bit. So neat. Okay, so I am going to peek at the comment section again right now. So if anybody has any questions or anything to add, oh, Ashley says they saw a common yellow throat. That's very exciting. Wyatt, you saw a deer in your neighborhood in Madison? That's amazing. Oh, I love seeing that. Oh, Roma and Willa say hi. Hi guys. Well, hi kiddos. It's good to see you. Um, let's see. I wonder if I have a nature sighting to share. I actually, I have some hummingbirds visiting my bird feeder right now. And it's really fun looking at them. And I get to see, let's see, sometimes it's a male and sometimes it's a female. And they're in my book right here. So I can show you the male has a red throat and it's really bright and flashy. And the female, she doesn't. She's trying to stay hidden from predators on her nest. So it's really fun to see which one is coming to our feeder. I like that. They take it in turns. Oh, and I have another story to share. I can't believe I forgot this one. So earlier, maybe a week or so ago, we saw a big mama bunny. Well, we didn't know she was a mama then, but she is. <laughs> and she was getting hay from our garden. And she was taking it over to where we had a tomato plant planted. And then we saw that she had nibbled the tomato plant and threw it to the side. <laughs> she took the whole thing out. And then we noticed that the ground was a little bit, um, well, there was, there was a hole underneath the tomato plant and we left it alone and we didn't look and we waited and we waited and we waited. And then yesterday we went and peeked. And I wanna say that if you have, what you think is an animal nest in your yard, it's a really good idea to keep your space or keep distant most of the time. You wanna give the animal space. You wanna not put your scent around it because predators can smell us and they might come find the nest too. Um, but it's okay to check maybe once and we did. And we gently, gently, gently pulled the hay back and we lifted the little, we have some plastic down as weed guard um, and we lifted that up. And then we saw so much fluffy fur 
it was all lining the nest. The mama had made the nest nice and fluffy and warm for her bunnies. And then we saw two little teeny, teeny, tiny bunny noses peeking out and they sniffed and then they turned around and they went right back in because they knew it wasn't mama. So we only looked for a second and then we put the fluffy fur back down and we put the plastic back down and then we put the hay back down. And then we put our scent around the garden so that it wouldn't be concentrated in one spot. So a fox wouldn't smell just that spot. It would know that we were in the whole thing. Um, and then we left and we watched at night because mama bunnies only come maybe twice a day to feed their babies once near dawn and once near dusk. And we watched at night and she hopped over there and she stayed on the nest for a little while and then she left. And I'm so excited. I hope we get to see baby bunnies soon. I really, really do. Um, so I'm gonna go check out the comments again and see if there's any more nature stories. Oh, New Hampshire chickadees sing very fast. Very cool. That is neat that someone else out there is noticing. Um, all of these, these dialects too. Um, oh, and one of your neighbors has a bunny nest too. That's amazing. Um, Karina, this video is going to be shared on, it'll be, it'll just be available afterwards that you can share if you want to. Um, but I don't have videos of specific bird dialects, um, but I think you can probably find some. Very awesome. Everybody, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for week two of summer camp. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna wrap up this video very soon, and then I'm gonna take a really quick break just to get set up, and we're gonna play bird call bingo. So I have a bingo set here, and I'm gonna use a camera so everyone can see it. So if you want, you can just play along with me. Um, but also if you want, you can print off the bingo sheet. It's on, it's on the webpage. I'll put a link in it in the comments here so you can get ready for it if you want to. Um, but you can print off your own and play with me on your own set. That'll be very exciting. Okay, so this was week two. We have all sorts of fun things planned. Um, we're gonna make a bug noise maker together. Milk is gonna do a live lesson on that later this week. Um, we have all sorts of noise scavenger hunts out there. We're going to get to do our sit spots again. We're going to nature journal. Oh, I should have had my nature journal here to show you next time. I will. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for week two. Thank you all for joining us. Um, these lessons, this whole summer camp is free for anyone to join. And we still have spots for our next session. It's four weeks this session. And then we do another one again, starting in late July. Um, and it's free, it's for anyone. And if you are in a position where you're able to donate some money and support this and you feel like what we're doing is awesome, we would love it. I'll put a link in the, the comments so you can do that. And if you're not in a position to do that, you know what, it's still gonna be free for you. So enjoy it because nature is for everyone, everyone, everyone. So get out and enjoy and explore and collect some nature stories so I can hear them, all right? Bye everybody.